In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation? Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today we receive and meditate on the conclusion of Jesus' sermon that he proclaimed following the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus concludes his sermon saying, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Jesus said this because of the disciples' reaction to his words that he had proclaimed earlier. Jesus spoke saying, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. The disciples heard this. It doesn't say that the unbelievers heard this, but the disciples heard this and they said, This is an unacceptable word. Who is able to listen to it? This message that when you eat the flesh of Jesus and drink his blood, you abide in him and he in you. This word of Jesus isn't difficult to understand. It's not a hard saying. But rather, it is unacceptable. It's impossible to believe it. Because the flesh is of no avail. Would you have reacted the same way the apostles did at the words of Jesus? <clears throat> now, we say we wouldn't because we believe it today, right? We say we would have believed Jesus and continued following all our days. We have faith and trust in Christ today, not like those weak disciples long ago. But do we live as if we believe, or fully trust in the words of Jesus. When you eat his body and drink his blood in the sacrament of the altar, you abide in Jesus, and he remains in you. Is that how we live? As Jesus would. Do we put the best construction on our neighbor? Or do we demolish them piece by piece? Do we live a chaste life? Or do we give in to every sexual impulse? Do we gladly hear the word of the Father and do His will just like Jesus did? Or are we bored by sacred scripture? and make our own destiny. In short, is your life evidence of Jesus working within you? Do you forgive unconditionally? Or do you hold grudges? Do you repent? Or do you make justifications and excuses? Do you serve? Or do you like being served? Yes, you come to this altar and you eat and you drink, but how do you eat and drink? Is it just a carnal, oral eating? You're munching on bread and drinking wine. Is it a worthy eating in faith, or do you approach this table without sorrow over your sin and the desire to live a better life? <clears throat> Do you approach with a little bit of trust in yourself? Do you approach with just a small bit of hatred for your neighbor 
or hatred of yourself? Do you approach this table today strong and able or weak and crippled? Are you worthy or are you unworthy to eat the flesh of Jesus and drink his blood today? Because that's the question that matters. That's the only one you need to be able to answer today. Are you worthy or are you unworthy to eat the flesh of Jesus and drink his blood today? The true and worthy guests, as our confessions say, the true and worthy guests for whom this precious sacrament above all was instituted and established are the Christians who are weak in faith, fragile and troubled, who are terrified in their hearts by the immensity and number of their sins and think that they are not worthy of this precious treasure and of the benefits of Christ because of their great impurity. So if you're a terrible sinner, then yes, you are worthy to eat his flesh and drink his blood today. Those who are worthy today are just like St. Peter who said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have trusted and have been brought to know that you are the Holy One of God. The flesh is of no avail to you today, nor any day in the future. You will never accept the words of Jesus, nor will you improve on your own and become worthy by your own merit. This is why Jesus said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. Our salvation, our forgiveness, is not a prize we obtain, but rather a gift granted to us freely by the Father. There is our trust, not in our ability to accept or understand Jesus and His words, but rather our comfort is that Jesus gives Himself completely to us to grant us eternal life. Trust not then, beloved, in yourself or in your ability to become a better person. And <clears throat> when you look at the catechism on how to prepare to receive the sacrament, it has nothing to do with you being a good person. I remember back in college, we used to have the Lord's Supper every Wednesday night, and we were going from dinner one night to the sacrament, and one of my brothers in the pre-seminary program was going back to his room. And I said, good brother, the sacrament's this way. Why are you going that way? He said, well, I'm not prepared to receive it tonight, so I'm going back to my room. And I said, well, only the devil dwells there where you have opportunity to increase in vice and sin. Come rather to the table, for there is a weak person bed. There is the medicine of immortality. Have you ever been that way? Either running away from the sacrament, or trembling as you approach because you're just not worthy, or not well prepared. Trust not, then, beloved, in yourself or in your ability to become a better person. Despair not that you aren't as holy as you should be or that you continue to succumb to the same sin week after week. It's not about you or how you either improve or backslide. No, your salvation is not determined by the flesh, but rather by the Spirit, whose sole job is to give you Christ. And Christ is always the same. You who know 
that the flesh avails nothing, who have experienced the flesh that fails daily, come and hear the words of Jesus that say, whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. That flesh and blood of Jesus went forth from that synagogue in Capernaum and marched to Golgotha in order to make atonement for you. There at Calvary did Jesus make the one-time payment for you, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Even though that flesh and blood was absolutely human, that flesh and blood was and is eternally united with the divine nature of the Holy One of God in the person of Jesus the Christ. That flesh and blood consumed every drop of your sin, and there it abides forever. In that great exchange, the Father gave you to Jesus and Jesus to you. There did Jesus win your atonement, your freedom, your life for himself. So come then today, you who struggle, you who've lost your fights with the devils, you who are stressed out and burdened by the world, come today and hear the good news of Jesus for the blessed exchange takes place anew today. This day your sin is forgotten. Death exchanged for life as you feed on Jesus and drink his blood in the sacrament of the altar. In the Lord's supper prepared for you. Any poison in your system today is drained by Christ. And in this meal, you have an eternal transfusion of His holy blood put into the place of that poisonous blood sucked out. You who are burdened, come and be relieved. As Dr. Luther said in the large catechism, if you are burdened and feel your weaknesses, go joyfully to the sacrament and let yourself be refreshed, comforted, and strengthened. For if you wait until you are rid of your burden in order to come to the sacrament purely and worthily, you will have to stay away from it forever. It's the Spirit who gives life to you today in this most holy feast of immortality as you eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood. This the flesh can't accept. We will never accept these words of Jesus. We'll never fully comprehend them. We'll never be good enough for them. But praise the Lord that the flesh, our good works and reason don't save us or make us worthy. Jesus does. Take heart. Your medicine, your relief, your sustenance is here for you. The bill's been paid on the cross. Come and enjoy the feast and live forever with Christ. And he will raise you up on the last day to live with him for all eternity. Come, the feast is ready. You're going to live forever. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.